Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. Notice the flared spotlands, the high style collar, the flawless blending of the skins, the deep, rich color. This coat is of exceptional value. It's only $16,000. <laughs> oh, that is exceptional, Lucille. Oh, uh, yes, darling. But it is so common. Common? There's only one other coat like this in the entire world. And that coat is worn by the Queen of England. Oh, dear. In that case, I couldn't possibly buy it. The Queen and I go to all the same parties. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think I have just the coat for you. Pardon me, Georgia. <coughs> You were right. This is fun. I wonder what she'd do if she knew we only had 27 cents between us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a wonderful place to spend your lunch hour when you can't afford lunch. <laughs> Are you sure they have tea and sandwiches here? Yes, all the high-class stores do. I go to a different store every Friday. <laughs> Where are you going? To get a sandwich. Then cool it, girl, cool it. Remember, we're rich, not hungry. I'm not hungry, I'm starved. Well, so am I, but let's not be obvious. We don't want them to think that's all we came here for. They'll serve. Some sandwiches for you, lady? Oh, well, we're really not hungry. But we'll force ourselves. Uh, well, <laughs> yes, if you insist. <laughs> what kind of sandwich would you like, madam? Oh, well, I'll have one of those, and one of those, and one of those. And you, madam? And one of those, and one of those, and two of those. <laughs> this is oh. you. Chinchilla. Uh. Why, it doesn't Madam try it on? Yeah, why don't you try it on, Lucy? Just wearing it will give you a feel of it so much better than my mere words. Notice that while the fur is as soft as gossamer, it is both thick yes. and rich. Notice the fullness of the coat. See how it flares when you turn around. Turn around a few times. <laughs> and I must draw your attention to the fact that we have used only the top of the pelt, not the sides or tummies. No tummies. No. <laughs> and, madam, an extra conversational piece is the fact <laughs> that the hem can be turned into a stole for the evening. Oh! <laughs> Why doesn't madam try it on? Oh, well, it, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's quite enchanting, mm. really. This coat is consistent in <laughs> ported Peruvian pelts, <laughs> which are in their natural state and have not been lightened or brightened or in any way artificially enhanced. And the price, madame, is only $35,000. <laughs> madame, all right. Oh, it's really beautiful, Lucille. Oh, madam, the coat is you. It's really you. It's just lovely. Why don't you get it? <laughs> no, actually, I don't think that I'll take this one. But why, madam? Well, to tell you the truth, darling, it depresses me. It depresses me to think of all those little chinchillae Running around with just sides and backs and no tummy. <laughs> oh, I see, madam. I'm sorry we had nothing to please you. Perhaps some other time. How about next Friday? <laughs> madam is always welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, they have wonderful food here. Oh, 
it's so good. Hey, our yeah. lunch hour is over. Come on, let's okay. go. Okay. Oh, I am nice so to glad to meet you. I've heard so much about you. <laughs> it must be wonderful being a hypnotist. It comes in handy sometimes. <laughs> She's really remarkable, Lucy. She can make people do practically anything. Really? Yeah, she hypnotized me and, and stopped me from biting my nails. I didn't know you ever bit your nails. Oh, I used to. It was a terrible habit. When I went to an exciting movie, I'd bite off my nails oh. and then I'd bite off all my boyfriends. <laughs> Isn't that great? Well, she's just amazing. She can make people do all sorts of things. Well, what are some of the other things? Well, uh, uh, she can make people get over the fear of flying. Uh huh. Or and, uh, keep them from overeating, and I can help you stop smoking. Or if you're not able to sleep at night, I can give you a suggestion. Oh, that's good to know. Well, if I'm ever bothered by any of those things, I'd like to come and see you. Where's your office? Oh, no, I don't have an office. I'm not a doctor, Lucy. Oh, oh. But I'll tell you what, I'm working at the Royal Club, and you can come participate in my act. How's that? You're appearing at the Royal mm -hmm. Club? Oh, I'd love to do Would that. Would you come so nice? Oh, oh I love it. Look, Thank you. It was you. nice seeing you, Mary Jean. I have to go and pick up my new coat. Bye-bye, Lucy. We'll nice see you soon. Bye-bye. I wonder what kind of a fur coat she's getting. Probably rabbit. <laughs> rabbit? Sure, she could hypnotize herself into thinking it's mink. <laughs> well, it's a lot cheaper that way. She saves a lot of money. <laughs> Now, let me see this next letter. This goes to Rylander and Mosier. Rylander and Mosier, yes, yes, sir. Yes, Gentlemen, I feel it would be mutually beneficial if we... Oh, oh. What's the matter, Miss Mooney? Something wrong? <sighs> yes, yes, I've got a splitting headache. Do you know I haven't slept for three nights? Oh, oh, well, then that explains it. Uh, that explains what? Why you're such a big grouch. What? I mean, uh, why you're a bigger grouch than usual. No, I'm... I mean, oh, dear. Uh, I know what you mean. I can't say that I blame you. I must admit that for the past two days, I haven't been my usual Mr. Nice Guy. Well, no need to apologize, sir. Going without sleep for three nights would put a strain on anybody. Yes, but it's more of a strain for me. When I stay awake, I have to look at my wife. <laughs> oh, this going without sleep is driving me crazy. And I've tried everything. Like Every what? Well, I've taken pills, taken warm milk, I've counted sheep. I even tried listening to Wayne King records. <laughs> Didn't help a bit if I could just get a good night's sleep. Oh, Mr. Mooney, I've got it. What, 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 what? I know how you can get a good night's sleep. How, 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 how? Hypnotism. Hypnotism? Yes, I know a hypnotist. Mrs. Gets... Carmichael, I appreciate your thinking about me, but hypnotism is a lot of nonsense. No, it isn't. Hypnotists have helped lots of people with lots of things, like, um, like, like getting over the fear of jumping out of airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> with a parachute, you know. Oh, really? Well, you've tried everything else. What do you got to lose? You can't go on without sleep. Oh, no, no, that's right, that's right. Well, all right, you call this hypnotist friend of yours and tell him I'd like an appointment for 5 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, Mr. Mooney, it's not a him, it's a her. And you cannot see her privately. You, uh, you have to go to the nightclub where she's appearing and, and get into her act. Get into her act? <laughs> Have you flipped your flaming wig? <laughs> she helps people. Mrs. Who Carmichael, speak. I am a banker. I cannot appear in a nightclub act. I have to uphold the dignity of my job. Well, if you keep going without sleep, you won't even have a job. You're liable to get fired. It'll be pretty hard getting another job at your age. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> well. Well, maybe I better not take a chance. All right, where is this hypnotist appearing? At the Royal Club. I'll take you there tonight. Well, thank you, but you don't have to take me. Oh, all right. We'll go Dutch. <laughs> Oh, 
boy, did I make a mistake coming here tonight. Why do you say that? Well, if you think I'm going to get up there and make a fool of myself in front of all these people, oh, you're very Mr. much mistaken. Oh, Mr. Mooney, now there's nothing to be afraid of. Ladies and gentlemen, I can help you. The Royal Club proudly presents the hip hypnotist, Miss Pat. <laughs> For those of you who have never seen a hypnotic show before, I'm going to give you a very brief explanation of what is about to happen up here. Once again, in a few moments, I'm going to invite about five or six of you to come up on the stage and to volunteer to be hypnotized. Now, this is for real. If you'd like to come up, you're more than welcome. But before you venture up here, I want to explain to you exactly how you're going to feel because most people really do not understand the science of hypnosis. Now, they seem to think if they come up here and go under, they're going to become unconscious and not know what they're doing, and that's very, very wrong. They also seem to think that I hypnotize them, which is very wrong. You actually hypnotize yourself. You do this by concentrating, by taking my suggestions. Once you go under hypnosis, you're not unconscious, you're fully aware of everything that's happening, you're just very, very relaxed. Uh, you're reacting to suggestions that happen in your imagination. Uh, you're reacting with a reflex on your part. Uh, you won't change in any way. If you're shy, you'll be shy when you're hypnotized. If you're an extrovert, you're gonna be an extrovert. The beauty of it is that most of us think we're shy, you know, <laughs> until we get hypnotized. I guarantee you'll have a marvelous time if you come up here. So you'll go under, you'll be very creative. The biggest bonus that you got out of the host show is the fact that the 45 minutes to an hour that you will be up here under hypnosis is the equivalent of eight to 10 hours sleep. So if you'd like to give it a try, you're more than welcome. All I ask of you is that you're serious, that you want to be hypnotized. Those of you that want to try, come on up right now and we'll start the show. Let's go. Take you to the moon. Look in my eyes, you'll see what I mean. Take my hand and follow me. I'm sorry, we don't have any more chairs. I'll take you to the stars. All right, we're going to begin with the people that are on the stage. And we want all of you to kind of quiet down so that I can put these people on the stage under hypnosis. We have to have it quiet. I'm sorry. Sorry. Quiet and settled. Hi, how are you? Remember me? No. <laughs> well, I'm the girl that, that uh, has the girlfriend who, who bites her boyfriend's nails. Oh. Lucy, Lucy oh. Carmichael. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> all right, we're going to begin with these people that are on the stage. I'm going to ask all of you in the room to please be very, very quiet now as we put them under hypnosis. Once they've gone under, you can make all the noise that you want to, okay? Thank you very much. Now, those of you on the stage, I want you to settle back in your seats. Get your feet flat on the floor. Put your hands in your lap. Feet flat, honey. That a girl. Now, keep your hands open. Don't uh, close them because they start to tingle. Those of you on the stage, I want you to settle back and look directly into one of the spotlights. And um, stare into the spotlight. Give you something to focus on. Now. I'm going to begin by relaxing all of you, so stare at the one object. Now, I want all of you to take a very deep breath, relax your body, now concentrate on the sound of my voice. Now, when I count to three, all of you on the stage, raise your left arm high in the air, light as a feather. When I count to three, all of you put your left arm up high in the air, one, two, and three, raise your left arm. All of you raise your left arm, now concentrate on the muscles in your left arm. Your left arm, when I count to three, make it rigid as a piece of steel. Lock every muscle in your left arm in the count of three and go deeper sleep. One, two, and three, arm rigid. Left arm stiff and rigid as a steel bar. Every muscle in your arm is locked tight. Every muscle in your left arm is locked tight and you cannot lower your arm. You cannot lower your arm, physically impossible. Physically impossible to lower your arm, trying to put it down, but you cannot. Try and put it down, but you cannot get it down. Now you realize that you are hypnotized, this is all there is to it. Throughout the rest of the show, you will do as my voice tells you and have a marvelous time with suggestion. All inhibitions are gone, you're not embarrassed. All of you take another deep breath. Relax now, every muscle in your body, loose and heavy. Relax that left arm, let it fall down, and go deeper asleep. Relax every muscle in your body. Now, for those of you who have never seen my show before, I'm going to explain to you what we're going to do. The first five minutes of all of my shows, I work with the people on the stage, give them suggestions to see what kind of personalities and reflexes they have. Keep in mind, they know what they're doing. I'm giving them these suggestions uh, to see how fast they are, how slow they are, who's shy, who's an extrovert, and so on. It's all in their imagination. They don't really see a funny movie, but they laugh at it. And they don't uh, really get hot or cold, but they fan themselves. It's beautiful to watch, hysterical. It's wonderful to listen to. They say very funny things, people that are hypnotized, because they're creative and they don't think they're under. And the other night when I was doing the funny movie thing, everybody was laughing except one little old man who kept insisting he wasn't under. He just goes, oh, you know. 
And I said, what's wrong? He said, I saw that movie. And he went right back to the <laughs> So they say funny things. Enjoy yourself, okay? When I count to three, I'm taking all of you on the stage. It's a very funny movie, and you're going to laugh out loud. All of you on the stage will laugh out loud on the count of three louder than you've ever laughed before in your life because you think you see the movie. Do not awaken. One, two, and three. There it is, the funniest thing that you've ever seen. All of the stage, laugh out loud and enjoy yourself. All of you laugh out loud and enjoy yourself and go deeper and deeper sleep. Do not awaken until like that. It's the funniest movie you've ever seen. Now, when I count to three, all of you stop laughing and freeze. One, two, and three. Freeze. <laughs> Why? Oh, I have to talk to this one. This is the one I have to talk to first. He's great. Use phone touching. Just kind of relax and stand up. The rest of you close your eyes, relax, and sleep. And I've got to talk to you. Come here. You're marvelous. You're just fantastic. What's your name? Uh, Theodore J. Mooney. Oh, um, what do you do for a living, Mr. Mooney? I'm a banker. And I might as well tell you that I don't believe in hypnotism. <laughs> That's all right, because I don't believe in banks. You don't think you're hypnotized? Well, of course not. I'm not hypnotized. I couldn't be asleep. I have insomnia. Well, that really has nothing to do with it. See, you're relaxed, right? You're very relaxed and you're happy, right? See how relaxed? I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm not particularly happy. Oh, you, oh, you're very happy, Mr. Mooney. So happy you'd like to turn a cartwheel. That's how happy you are. You would. Oh, now that's ridiculous. I've never turned a cartwheel in my life. I don't intend to turn one now. But you will when I count to three, one, two, and three. Turn! <laughs> And what's more, you cannot make me turn a car. Oh. Oh, oh, yes, yes, all right. Well, that's all right. You take my hand. I want you to come over here, and I want you to sit down in your chair, and I want you to, to go to sleep and work on your insomnia, okay? You just sit down and relax and sleep way down. Let's talk to the kooky redhead that was giving me all the trouble, all right? Here's where I'm touching. Open your eyes. Do not awaken. Stand up, honey. I want to talk to you. Come on. Up. It's a hot chair. Hot chair. Hot chair. Come <laughs> on, What's the matter? It's hot. Oh, well, we'll cool it off later. You're Lucy, right? Yes. What do you do for a living, Lucy? I'm a secretary. Oh, you're not your typewriter. Huh? <laughs> Electric carriage. <laughs> the fun nose design. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop. What are you doing? Oh, oh, what are you doing? Changing my ribbon. <laughs> Don't do they say funny things? Uh, you better sit down, Lucy. Just sit down and relax. You're just yourself, okay? It's not a hot chair. You feel great, right? Good. Sleep. Way down. Deep sleep. Relax. Now, all of you on the stage, take a very deep breath. And when I count to three, I want you to open your eyes, sit up in your chair. Do not awaken. There's a fly in your nose. One, two, and three. All of you, open your eyes, sit up in your chair. There's a fly in the very tip of your nose. Get him off. Get him off. He tickles you. He's on the very tip of your nose. Get him off there. There he's buzzing around. He's going in your hair. And your hair on top of your head. The fly is going all over the place. And your head out buzzing around and around. The fly is buzzing everywhere and all over. The fly is buzzing. There it goes. Watching it. Buzz, buzz, buzz. It's raw buzz. Buzz. Oh. oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all of you. Freeze! Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's see how creative these people are. When I count to three, all of you on the stage, you open your eyes and stand up. You think you're washing machines. One, two, and three, all of you. All of you are washing machines. You're a heck of a washing machine. You're a great washing machine. Look how old fashioned Mr. Mooney is. One of those, you know, up and down things. He's wild, an agitator. This must be an Irish washing machine. I don't know. You're getting clogged up. I think that's the kind you put 25 cents into. And freeze! When I count a few all of the stage, you're uh, coffee pots. One, two, and three, you're a coffee pot. Isn't that wild? Everybody does it different. You know we're doing it, but they <laughs> we, <laughs> we have a regular grind and a big red-headed drip over here. <laughs> Look at the burn. I don't know what that is over there, to tell you the truth. Three! When I count a few all of the stage, you're monsters in a monster movie. One, two, and three, you're mean. And you're ugly. And you're gonna, everybody's an actor. Everybody in the world is a frustrated actor. And they're all, oh, oh wait, free! That's enough of that. That's enough of that. Um, uh, when I count to be all of you on the stage, except for Lucy, <laughs> sit down in your chairs and, and string some beads. It's good therapy. You can make a necklace. One, two, and three. Sit down. Look at that. <laughs> Welcome to the Wax Museum. <laughs> Lucy, go ahead. You sit down and relax and have fun and string some beads. These two are perfect for a bit that I do when I get these kind of people. I want to do it. I've got my props over here. When I count to three, Lucy and Mr. Mooney, both of you are going to be uh, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Lucy, on the count of three, you're Stan Laurel. And Mr. Mooney, on the count of three, you're Oliver Hardy. And you're in a, in a movie, and you're filming a scene where you're in a park, and it's very hot, and Oliver's drinking water, and, and it's fun. And when I count to three, the rest of you will just kind of sleep while they make this movie. One, two, and three. <laughs> Hey, Ali. 
Don't worry, Stanley. I don't want to be late, Ollie. Don't worry, Stanley. We've got plenty of time. What time is it, Ollie? I look. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess you've got me into, Stanley. I'm sorry, Ollie. I just ran to Ollie. Please, all of you. We better do the group therapy. When I count to three, all of you in the stage are beautiful, graceful ballet dancers, and you'll stand up and do a beautiful, graceful ballet. One, two, and three, up! Free. Good thing it didn't happen in midair. Uh, I think I'm going to send them all back their seats. Uh, when I count to three, all of you on the stage will go back to your seats to the audience. But as you go back to your seats, you're going to dance because you're all great dancers. You're going to do an exotic voodoo dance back to your seat. And then when you get back to your seats in the audience, go to sleep and I'll come out and wake you up. On the count of three, all of you dance. One, two, and three. <laughs> If you're wondering what I'm asking in return, dear, you'll be glad to know that my demands are small. Just come back and see my show, and you really know that's all. That's all. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you very much. I'll be right up there to wait for you. Very nice to you. Good night. Feeling marvelous. One, two, and three. Wake up, Lucy. There you go. <sighs> you were great. Why? When is the show going on? <laughs> oh, it was, and you were on. You were marvelous. I'm going to wake really? up your sleeping beauty over here. Mr. Mooney is his name, right? Oh, yes. Don't forget to do something about his insomnia. He hasn't slept in three years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Insomnia. Oh, I thought he was putting me on. All right. Um, Mr. Mooney, uh, from now on, whenever you have trouble uh, going to sleep at night, uh, I'm going to give you a post-hypnotic suggestion. All you have to do is say to yourself, Nighty nights, nookie ookums. And whenever you say that to yourself, you go to sleep at night. You have no problems. Remember the signal is Nighty nights, nookie ookums. Now when I count to three, wake up, Mr. Mooney. Feeling wonderful. One, two, three, wake up. There you go. Thanks. Can I have my hat, Lucy? You were this thing up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You were a lot of fun. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, my. Isn't she amazing? Well, to someone as gullible as you are, yes. Personally, I think the whole evening was wasted. Post-hypnotic suggestion, oh, really? Aren't you even going to try it? Well, of course not. Do you really believe that a grown man is going to put himself to sleep simply by saying nighty-night, snooky <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why you wouldn't be... <laughs> Mr. Mooney? Mr. Mooney, wake up! Snooky Oakum, wait, Miss Pat! Miss Pat, Snooky, oh, I gotta get you out of here, Snooky. <laughs>